York Public Library today to talk to authors Stephen Johnson and Sherry Turkle uh, about technology. I'm interested in technology because I'm, I'm not using the internet right now. They've written books about technology, whether technology is progressive or not, what it's doing to us, what it's doing to our minds, and what it's doing to our society. I think it should be an interesting talk. Also, I'm hoping to get my copies signed. So you guys are here to discuss each other's books and the, the concept of uh, technology is technology for progress or progress and technology. Yeah, particularly networks, I think. The way that networks are kind of steering us both as individuals and as friends and families and also then as societies and political organizations. Um, how far are we getting pushed in positive directions and how much do we need to kind of steer the ship <laughs> In other directions. I, I, it's, it's something I saw kind of in both of your books, but that technology gets what technology wants. And so no, what no. does technology want? No, no, you saw that want? in Steven's book. I was <laughs> uh, but you, no, you, you got something. No, I'm, I'm teasing. One of the issues on the table, mm. I think, is the degree to which it makes sense to have a technologically determinist position, and the degree to which we get to say, mm, not so fast not so fast and have a little bit more uh, steering of the ship and saying that there are human purposes that may need to override some of the ways that technology would have it if technology were totally in control of the ship. So, so you would both agree that technology wants something? It, I, I think, uh, well, I would say the technology has there's this kind of technical t term of affordances, right? Certain technologies are developed and they have kind of default settings where, you know, if you live in a society with television, um, your political system will get more concerned with the way politicians look than a society built around the, the written word. Um, but that doesn't mean we're slaves to the technology um, because one, we can invent new technology and particularly with software, it's incredibly malleable so we can always kind of change the rules of the software. And two, we make informed decisions as citizens or as governments or as corporations about what kinds of behavior and uses of the technology we want to encourage and what kinds we want to discourage. Um, and in some sense what Sherry is trying to point out is that there are ways in which we've started to use these new technologies that we seem to be kind of falling into that we need to just step back and say, is everything we're doing here in the long run kind of good for us? And are some of these usage patterns maybe you know, a mistake? I, I think of it in terms of technological affordance and human vulnerability, mm -hmm. that uh, technology makes certain things possible and we're very vulnerable to certain of those things that it makes possible. But just because you're vulnerable doesn't mean that that's the direction you need to go. You can get a little less vulnerable if you think something is bad for you. Yeah. So for example, cars, you know, you drive them fast enough, you get into really a lot of accidents, you don't put in seat belts, you don't develop an infrastructure for rules of the road. They can get you into a lot of trouble. At a certain point you decide, you know, these cars, let's think about uh, how to make them safer. Let's think about how to design highway systems that will, you know, make it less likely that we get into accidents. And I think over the course of hundreds of years, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen overnight, but you gradually develop those kind, that kind of infrastructure for dealing with this new technology. And I think that the, um, one of my favorite lines in my book actually is just because we just because we um, grew up with the internet we think that the internet is all grown up yeah <laughs> you know I, mean, I, I when I when that line came to me I said that's it you know we, we have this sense that somehow what we have now is this is it okay. it's very early days and we, we're just at the beginning I think of thinking how um, we need to change it and shape it and mold it to make it conform to really what our social and psychological values are, what we think the good life is. Yeah, a, a, a line, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, one of, the, it's one of the problems we have is, you know, just as you start to have that informed conversation about what this new technology is gonna enable us to do, there's a new technology t yes. <laughs> that comes along, you know. Yeah. I mean, Jerry and I have been t writing about this stuff, you know, between us for uh, quite a long time. And, you know, when you were first looking at you know, MUDs, yeah. uh, you know, the, the expectations about what people were going to do online 
you know, it was so much of it was about creating kind of role-playing identities for yourself and the idea of, you know, a social network graph and using social networks to share family photos with your, you know, extended family was almost not on the, you know, kind of landscape then. And so, you know, we, we do, we, we have to kind of have this conversation fast because, you know, who knows what the next paradigm is going to be in five years from now. I hope you don't mind. The, the, you have a lot of MySpace references in your book. As, oh, MySpace. Those were the days. But <laughs> you've got a lot of Facebook, too. But it, it took a while to research your book, obviously. And this is, this is moving very fast. Yeah. Um, I really like this line that you're saying. Um, it was talking about robots. But uh, we're, we're delegating what was once love's labor changes the person who delegates. And I thought that was interesting in juxtaposition to the idea that a network can make a lot of things very easy and more immediate and quicker. And this idea of love's labor, that there might be just something that requires us, the, the very quality of it is the labor. Yes. Well, one of, the, one of the themes of my work when I subtitled the book, Why We Expect More From Technology and Less From Each Other, is that uh, we are delegating both to sociable robots, but also to social networks, uh, or displacing onto technology, uh, some of the things that were better done face to face, person to person. Uh, to me, sociable robotics, to be your best friend, uh, to be in conversation about intimate things is the, the, ultimate, um, the ultimate example of something that shouldn't be delegated because a sociable robot, no matter how clever, uh, doesn't know about loss, it doesn't know about love, it doesn't know about the, it can know about it in a kind of way that really isn't uh, a way of human meaning and experience. So, you know, why, if I want to talk about the loss of my mom, I really don't want to go to a sociable robot, no matter how much it knows how to make me feel that it knows what I'm talking about, no matter how clever it is at doing that. So that would be, to me, the ultimate example of technologies that are built to get me to delegate love's labor, but I'm looking for love. Um, and I think we do similar things, although less dramatically, um, in social networks and um, I think that's a human vulnerability. Um, Something that stuck out to me in your book related to that was the, that concept, the, um, the example of that sewer construction, where the, there's the foundation of the house that was oh, compromised, yeah, right, 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 yeah. and the sewer construction happening on that block would really mess up the house and yeah. be dangerous to the inhabitants. And he found out about that, basically word of mouth, or overhearing, yeah. and it was you know, lucky he overheard. So what, what is the, the role for just talking face to face with your neighbors versus you know, the, the peer network helping you with that? Well, that's, uh, that's something I want to make pretty clear here. So I, I, I'm actually not really arguing that the technology is driving this. And in many ways, I had a line in the book somewhere that you know, the internet is not the solution to these problems, the internet is just a role model. Like we can look at the way that the internet was built and the kind of kind of decision making and collaboration that went into the creation of the internet and the way that the internet was designed and the kind of architecture of the internet and take that success story and say we can solve other kinds of problems, many of them not involving technology. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not just about, you know, if we put everybody on Facebook, the world will be better. I don't think that's true at all. And one of the places where this kind of peer network philosophy, I think, works the best is precisely in local neighborhoods and communities. Because it is anchored in that kind of knowable community, that face-to-face -face community. And it may be augmented by new digital tools and by, you know, kind of pattern detection software and um, tools for allowing people to make decisions kind of, you know, online. But it is embedded in the physical world of shared sidewalks and, and communities. Um, and th that's the space, actually, that I'm most excited about. It's a place where that technology is kind of layered over the, the kind of physical world in a really positive way, not just being a kind of 
a layer that causes you to not pay attention to people and check your email while you're talking to them, um, which I'm tempted to do now just to demonstrate how annoying it is. How many emails have both of you received during this? <laughs> yeah, my leg has been vibrating this whole time now. You guys get quoted so often. Sherry, I especially see you because I, I read a lot about how internet is you know, making us lonely or doing this or that to us. Can you guys just talk about what, how you see your work used and quoted versus what you would like people to take away from it? I'm not a Luddite. I really am not trying to take your toys away. So whoever is watching this, wherever you are. <laughs> Sherry wants you to have your toys. Keep your toys. <laughs> um, and I think that's very important because I think that um, by, by calling uh, a serious critique, I mean, also, my book is fieldwork based. I mean, it's been 15 years. It's, it, I'm reporting. I'm reporting and I'm commenting on what I see. But I'm not just reporting on the good. I'm, you know, I'm reporting on things that disturb me. I, um, I, I think that there's a, um, a tendency to take a report that is um, critical or says, look, I, developmentally, this could be a problem for kids or reports on kids describing problematic things um, and absolutely go ballistic. So I've been reading some of the early reviews of Stephen's book and some people like it, some people like it a lot, some people like it a little less, but nobody says, that ignorant slut, how dare he? Waiting for that. No, they're, but they're not going to. Yeah. You know, because it's a positive book and they might like it not more or less. Some people really love it, some people like it a little bit less, but they don't, they're not furious. And some people read my book, they, they, I read these reviews on Amazon, it's terrifying what people say about me. I mean, it really makes me think do I get police protection from Amazon? I mean, oh, really? you know, I mean, there's something about, um, and I think that's very interesting. I mean, to, I mean, to be serious about it, I mean, you know, how dare she? How dare she? And I think that that is the reaction to, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I put it out there. I'm uh, pretty self-confident, and uh, I have all this work that went into it. So I'm, you know, I'm, I can take it. But I think that's. That is something that I would say about the reception of the book and what people say about the book is really where does that come from? That's interesting because I got some surprising reactions from people being um, defensive, just me saying that I wanted to leave the internet, as, taking that as an attack on them and feeling like they needed to defend why they use the internet as if I was saying, how dare you use the internet, everybody should stop. Uh, it's interesting that people take it so personally uh, as, as, an, it's, as if you're attacking them. Yeah. Well, I, just, I, think it's very, I think it's very important that we have serious work that critiques technology. And you're, you're, you need to encourage that work. And my professional career is to encourage, I, mean, I teach at MIT and try to encourage that work at MIT and other places. And you don't want to... You know, it's interesting if when you write that work, after a 15-year ramp up, you really do get, what is that old Saturday Night Live saying, you know, Jane, you Jane ignorant Harris. slut, you know, I mean, you know, as, as, as. so yeah. I, 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 I'm happy you asked that question. I'm happy to have given a pretty honest answer. Now you should answer. Well, I think the one thing about, just to talk more about yeah. Sherry, it's, experience that, you know, I think people want to see a critic of technology as someone who is stuck in the old way of looking at things and hasn't, you know, fully embraced the new technology because they don't understand it. And the, and the great thing about Sherry's career is that she's been, <laughs> she's way ahead of everybody. You know, and she was sitting there in, you know, with Eliza in, yeah. you know, in 1978 or whatever yeah. that was, you know. And, uh, and so she, it's not like she's coming at it as, as a Luddite at all. Um, she's just coming it's not at like someone who's observing things. I don't understand things. it. Right, exactly. For, from my perspective, I, you know, I agree there's, no, there's not a need in society for people to be optimistic about technology and the latest gadgets. We have plenty of that. What we don't have is a lot of 
optimism about our capacity as a society to solve important problems and come up with interesting new kind of collaborative architectures to solve those problems. And we have this very pessimistic sense of how we're doing as a society on a, on a lot of fronts. It actually isn't warranted. We have a lot of economic problems right now, but we have a lot, as I start the book, with that kind of long list of kind of social health trends, all of which have been steadily improving over the last 30 years, in fact, over the last 100 years for the most part. And so I'm, I'm not trying to just be a cheerleader for technology. Um, and I think if I were to write a book just about technology, I would have much more of Sherry's tone in it. Um, which I think is incredibly important. I'm trying to say that there's actually a new vision of how change happens and the institutions that are responsible for that change that, as I said, is inspired by technology but is not kind of reducible to it. What do you think about me and what, what uh, can we be doing about these things that you're talking about, both pros and, and cons? Well, I, I want to just address your leaving the internet. Um, I personally uh, don't like talking about internet addiction because I think it encourages people to say, I have to leave the internet. I have to throw away my phone. I prefer to think of it in terms of our vulnerability to go, not using our phones wisely and going on a kind of digital diet to get the balance right. Um, I think if you decide to leave the internet for a time of stepping back and reflection, I think that's to the good, but I hope actually, that you use the time for reflection and kind of a recentering and come back to the internet to make the internet a better place for all of us. So my, that would be my hope for about how you use however long you stay away from the internet. So that's just my perspective. I would say we miss you on the internet when we're having a huge party there and you're really oh, missing out. Yeah, Sherry and I are having a great time on the internet. You would not believe what's going on. <laughs> Typical. The one year I leave the internet, everybody has a party. Thank you so much, guys. Our Thanks. pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.